It's been seemingly verified that Cassidy Rainwater is deceased, though DNA evidence is still pending. Uh, check out the case if you haven't heard of it. Police were tipped about her location by photos from the dark web, revealing that she was being held partially nude in a cage. So now there's rumors of police finding her captor, James Phelps, eating a human sandwich upon their arrival uh, to reports of over a dozen bodies found on the property. Uh, the property has since been burned down by explosives and authorities aren't releasing any information so the speculation regarding this case is getting out of control and it's hard to decipher what's truth from fiction there's a lot of focus on the cannibalism and more sensational aspects of this story even though there's no evidence that's been released verifying those rumors so i wanted to focus on the evidence we do have and speculate from there we know Cassidy was kept in a cage and exploited sexually on the dark web. We also know this took place in Missouri. Uh, we know there was a semi located on the property and uh, that Phelps partner in crime was also a semi truck driver. And by all accounts, uh, Cassidy was struggling with drug addiction during the time of her disappearance. I mention that because according to the data, human trafficking in Missouri is primarily used for sexual exploitation as opposed to labor, and Missouri does have a human trafficking problem. And according to this article, the methods these traffickers use to trap victims include exploiting a victim's drug habit and or physically restraining them. So luring a woman with a drug problem into one's home by the promise of drugs, then caging her before declothing her and exploiting her online is textbook human trafficking. Now this is where the research gets interesting. Why does Missouri have such a bad human trafficking problem? Well, according to the FBI, it's because of the connections between 70 and 44. Highway 70, Interstate 44. Okay, this is where things get weird, folks. So, we see that the James Phelps house is at 386 Moon Valley Road, where this red marker is right here. And there's a clear connection between Highway 70 and 44, that stops right by James Phelps' house. We know that he lives on a path that's prime for human trafficking. We know that his partner was a semi-truck driver and they had a semi on the property. We know there are multiple abandoned vans on the property. We know that he used the typical methods for human trafficking on this property. So. So my theory is they were small players in a much larger operation. Um, they acted as a port for transportation of humans, as well as securing that route between 70 and 44. By living on Moon Valley Road, they had excuse to travel it. The registered sex offender there that lived on the property would deter families from moving into the area, and then those who chose to still move there went missing. Now, I think Cassidy knew too much, and it was their job to get rid of her, but they got greedy, and they decided, why not cut out the middleman and try to sell a sex slave on the dark web myself but they didn't know what they were doing they didn't know how to block their ip address or do it properly so they got caught somebody tracked down their ip address and police had to go out and find cassidy now the real players of the big operation are the ones that burn that place down and i think that the path um that goes on moon valley road between 70 and 44 is a path where a lot of crime is taking place so i started to do some investigating on this area right around his house to see what other houses i could find uh, just anything i could find really and mostly i found a ridiculous amount of churches but i did find something 17 miles away it, out in the middle of nowhere it was a women's shelter what was labeled as a women's shelter called the Heart to Heart Center for Women's Ministry. So my first interpretation of this place was that it was culty as hell. Um, nobody that works there is any type of certified counselor. Um, everyone that is a volunteer there has to go through a 14-week uh, extensive training course. Just to get in, you have to fill out a pretty invasive application form. And so, so my thoughts went from thinking that this was a spot that was kind of culty. And if you read the website, you'll start to understand why why it's kind of culty and their non-discrimination policy they say they only accept women that were born as women um 
But as I dug deeper, I started to realize that I think this is less about being culty and more about not being real. It's almost impossible to get in here or work here. And why? Well, this uh, organization, the Center for Women's Ministries, is based out of Indiana. This is their headquarters. Does that look like headquarters for a women's shelter to you? According to their public records, the company keeps all of their important paperwork at Jerry Rhodes residence in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. So I looked him up and this is Jerry Rhodes, a singer and probably a Christian singer, you would think. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not at all. Uh. It's just bad, bad rock. You can tell he's definitely one of those people that has money to spend on paying someone to produce a record for him. Yeah. We're not done. Check out this map of human trafficking, Missouri and Indiana. So I decided to track down every one of these bad boys. And holy shit, I was able to find multiple addresses for this Center for Women's Ministry, which is really interesting when you start to go over their financials, but that'll be a different video. So anyways, I looked up each one of these individual addresses, and what I found was just crazy pants, because not a damn one of them, look at this, is a women's shelter. That's what this place looks like. Let's go to the next one. This is just some spot inside an apartment building. This one, this one's my favorite. It's in, it's behind a tanning salon. And this one. This is literally just a lot. There's not even a building there. It is just a lot. This this lot. So, something fishy is going on with this center for women's um, uh, ministries and where they're located. When you do a Google search for Center for Women's Ministries Missouri and pull up Google Maps, look where all those are located. Look familiar? Every single one of them is located on one of those little off highways between 70 and 44 near James Phelps property. Now, to be quite frank with you, what I'm about to show you is even scarier. So this is where James Phelps lives, and you see there's a lot of hidden pathways in the area. But what I thought was interesting was this road right here, because the shape of it, it almost seems like it's protecting everything behind it. I couldn't find anyone that lived in the area, no registered businesses, but look what I could find. Less than half a mile from his house. Look at all of those abandoned cars. What else do you think they could hide back here? Hmm, does that look like an office to you? Where they do paperwork?